Hey, Mr. Parker, for a huge update. Uh, I'm going to start with all the Blu-rays I got first. I'm looking around to make sure I got all the Blu-rays. And there will be a couple cuts in between here. That It's been a long time since I've uh, done an update. So I'll start Blu-rays and there will be a cut to DVDs and VHS or something like that. But uh, here we go. Uh, just randomly hop in this. But Flesh Eater on Blu-ray. This is a Bill Heinzman directed movie. Uh, kind of a semi-sequel to Night of the Living Dead. DVD and Blu-ray. Have not had a chance to watch the quality. I've always liked this movie. It takes place during Halloween. It is such a Night of the Living Dead cash-in. It's not something you would call an amazingly well-made film, but it is an enjoyable movie to me. And I've always liked it, and uh, I, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's not something that's spectacularly well-made, but uh, it's entertaining. It's fun. Uh, Bill Hines was pretty cool in it, and uh, it's got this like Halloween feel to it, small town feel. I, I really like it. It's got an uh, autumn feel too. You can like just feel like you're their Midwest autumn kind of style. I like Flesh Eater. Lots of fun to me. Uh, kind of random order here. So this is the end. I saw this in theaters. I thought it was okay. Uh, I thought some of the humor just was, I guess, too stupid for me, like too sophomoric. But I, I do remember enjoying it uh, a little bit, so I picked up a used copy uh, to rewatch it. I mean, I love Jonah Hill, so that this is the end. What else we got here? Wetlands, which this was actually my top 50, uh, you know, genre kind of movies of the, the year. Uh, Wetlands, really good stuff. Uh, it's been a while since I watched it, like I said, but yeah, I, I like this movie. It's about a, a girl who has a fascination with uh, bodily fluids, and she ends up in this hospital and starts to fall for this male nurse, and it goes back to her life and stuff like that. Uh, really dramatic, uh, also darkly funny, and it's just a really good movie. I, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, Starry Eyes. This is also a really cool movie. Top 50 again for me. It's about an aspiring actress who kind of uh, gets entangled in this weird cult. Uh, good score, uh, good uh, gory ending, and uh, really a well-made movie with uh, good performances all around. Really good stuff out of Starry Eyes. Recommended. Uh, Wetlands. Uh, all those are recommended, I'd say, except uh, it's up to you for This is the End. Lots of people like it, just I didn't get into it. The Houses. October built. Uh, actually, uh, I tried to watch this. I just couldn't get into it. It was found footage. I think I'm really burnt out on those. Uh, it takes place during Halloween, so I thought I might enjoy it. It might be good. I just couldn't get past the first 15 minutes. I'll, I'll give it a chance eventually. Horns, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, kind of a... This damn chair makes so much noise, but... Uh, Horns uh, with uh, Daniel Radcliffe by uh, Alexander Aja, who did uh, the Piranha remake, the Hills Have Eye remake, uh, uh, High Tension. And this one I thought was pretty cool. I thought the first half was really solid. The second half was kind of clunky and, uh, you know, uh, pretty predictable. I don't even know if it's supposed to be a twist. I think you kind of have to, supposed to know that already. But uh, it pisses me off. I ripped the cover right when I opened it. But, uh, you know, I thought it was an okay movie, so I'm not going to cry over spilled milk, and I'm just going to leave it with a tear, which I'm not happy about, but, you know. Uh, we have Zombie Killers Elephant's Graveyard, which is uh, a blue uh, Best Buy exclusive. I live like right next door to Best Buy. Not a huge fan of Best Buy anymore. They don't have much of a, a selection, but they do sometimes get exclusives. So I'll wander my happy ass down there and buy something. But I haven't seen this yet. It does have uh, Billy Zane in it and D. Wallace. Uh, picked this up. I just saw this and I had to have it. I hadn't seen Ghostbusters 1 in so long. So I put it in and watched Ghostbusters 1 on Blu-ray. Look looked great. Still funny. Still a great movie. Yeah, freaking Ghostbusters. What can you say? Recommended. It. It's Ghostbusters. You know, I like Ghostbusters. The Guest, which also made my top 50. This is by uh, Adam Wingard, I believe. Uh, and he did, you know, Homesick years ago. Pop Skull. What else did he do? Uh, You're Next, which I wasn't a huge fan of. But I really love Pop Skull and I really love Homesick. So uh, I was looking forward to it. He also did Horrible Way to Die, which I haven't watched. And uh, I was looking forward to this one. I, I put it in, watched it. Really, really great stuff here, guys. Uh, it's a genre blending movie. Tons of things going on. Vastly entertaining. Really good performance. Love this movie. Uh, uh, lots of good action. Top 50 again, I'd say. Then we have Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. And uh, everyone was going nuts about this movie. Like, it's so great. I was like, I was hyped by the trailer. Like, that is an amazing trailer. Looks great. Looks haunting. The score looks beautiful. It looks like it has great cinematography. And I will say, it does have great cinematography. Uh, and it's pretty well acted. Uh, but I just don't like the script. I think the script's kind of kind of clunky. I just don't care. Uh, I mean, it, it, like I said, uh, the suspense scenes, when they're there, they're really suspenseful. And it is a good movie. I just f didn't get sucked in like everybody else. And Jake Gyllenhaal's good in it. I think he's a good actor. But I, I don't think this is kind of like that performance that everyone's like, best performance ever. I'm like, eh. Eh. You know, it's good, but it's, I just think it's kind of overrated. Maybe it got overhyped for me. Maybe my expectations were really high because I thought this would probably be my favorite movie of the year. But I put it in and I was like, 
kind of long. I, I didn't buy the script. It doesn't really have a, a I, I just don't, the movie opens up and he, he's obviously a psychopath on his rise to like glory and it, it just starts off, I mean, he has no like character arc. I don't think he does. He's just the same the whole time. Maybe that's the point. I don't know. But uh, I just I just couldn't get into it. But uh, Fury with Brad Pitt. Uh, I have not watched this. I heard it was a good war movie. It's about a, it has a tank in it uh, during World War II. Looks like it's got a good cast. Looks like a good film. Uh, Dead Snow 2. I watched this. Top 50 for me. Really a lot of fun. Uh, I don't remember the first that much. I remember enjoying the first, but this one has a lot of action, a lot of fighting, a lot of gore, lots of goofy, funny moments. Uh, the Zero Theorem, which I have not watched, is by Terry Gilliam, and it has uh, Christopher Waltz in it, so uh, that may be interested in it. Also, not very expensive, so I saw the trailer look really crazy, really interesting, so picked it up. La Belle Captive, watch this. Uh, this is from Olive Films. This looked interesting. I believe it's a French film. I want to say, yeah, it's French. Uh, I watched this, and this was kind of interesting, kind of a, a surreal film noir. Uh, really different, but uh, nothing too amazing, but uh, the imagery is cool. A different movie, like I said, kind of like an artistic, surreal film noir film. Uh, then we have this uh, Fernando Del Leo, The Italian Crime Collection, Volume 2, Naked Violence, Shoot First, Dilator, The Kidnap Syndicate. Uh, he... And, uh, you know, what? I, I like the Italian uh, crime films. I don't get to watch them all that much. But uh, when I do, I always enjoy them. Same thing with the Spaghetti Westerns. Like, every time I put them in, I'm like, that was enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Well-made, very entertaining stuff. I always like them. I like how they look. I just like the aesthetic feeling. I just They make me feel good. All of them. So uh, I picked this up. Can't be bad. Got the first collection myself. Then we have Tusk, which I really had mixed feelings on this movie. I'm not sure how I feel about Tusk, uh, obviously by Kevin Smith, but it's got a, you know, a, a pretty big cast in here, and uh, everybody wants to talk about the third act when uh, Johnny Depp comes in, and I, I did feel it was out of place. The movie is a dark comedy, but his stick, his comedy stick in that did not fit the rest of the movie. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not a huge fan of the movie, I would say that, but it is interesting, and there is some uh, a weird... Uh, Special effects at the end are cool. And Michael Parks is always good. Uh, I'd say this is up to you. You guys are going to have to see this one for yourself, and I'm going to have to see it again to make a, a develop a final opinion on it. Uh, Night, uh, late Phases, Night of the Lone Wolf. Now, this is awesome. This movie is pretty cool. Uh, top 50 again. I watched this about an old man who goes to retirement home. His dog dies by a werewolf. He's blind, and he prepares a month to prepare to fight this werewolf. Really entertaining movie. Good practical effects. Good performances. Tom Newton's in it as well. Uh, really like this one. Highly recommended. Uh, then we have The Fan by Mondo Macabro. Have not had a chance to watch this. Just got this a couple days ago. Love what Mondo uh, Macabro or Macab. I always said Macabro, but I love what they're doing. Always enjoyed their stuff. And uh, yeah, they just they also released this movie, uh, I think, last year called Devil's Business, which I love. Great stuff. So The Fan, really cool movie. What else we got here? Necromantic 2 uh, by Cult Epics. Couldn't pass this up. Had to pick it up. The Necromantic movies are pretty damn cool. This one, end scene. And once you see it, you don't unsee it. I'll tell you that, and uh, York Bookeret always has great endings that you won't forget, and uh, this is no exception. That, that's the scene right on the back. Really cool movie. This The special features, I haven't got a chance to watch the stuff on here, but uh, there's tons of special features on here, and uh, yeah, and I can't wait. Here's to fingers crossed that Dirt Hoskin will finally get a United States release, and uh, Shram will get a Blu-ray release. Love to see them release Dirt Hoskin, which... And uh, while they're at it, why don't they just grab Barrel's whole back catalog since they're releasing that movie because the angst on Blu-ray, which is a really cool German serial killer movie and, uh, and and stuff like that. I'd really love to see those. But then, then we have, uh, I grabbed this because Grindhouse Releasing is one of the best uh, cult uh, releasing places. They released, uh, you know, Cannibal Holocaust on Blu-ray, one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, Cannibal Ferox on DVD, which will be, have a Blu-ray. Pieces on DVD. Great stuff. Always like what they do. And this one kind of caught me off guard. This is definitely not a movie that I would, uh, I, I, I'm sure I would like it. Like, it's something I would like if somebody told me to watch it. I just had never heard of it. And uh, it's called The Swimmer with Burt Lancaster. And that it's just supposed to be one of these really bizarre movies and uh, really well made. And uh, I was interested in picking it up. Uh, great company. I'm sure the print will look great. And uh, I love what they're doing. Anything, it, it, they, they release movies like that. I'm sure that I pretty much will be interested or enjoy everything they're going to do. Then we have The Big Gun Down, which is the ultimate Fortis set from uh, uh, Grindhouse with uh, Lee Van Cleef and uh, Thomas Milan from 
Uh, I, I hope I said his name right. I've seen him in so many movies I never pronounce names right. He was in the show Oz. He was in Almost Human. He was in, uh, what else is he in? Companion Arrows. He was in uh, Don't Torture a Duckling. Just a really great actor and lots of stuff. Been working for years. And it, Lee Van Cleef, come on guys. He's in, I just reviewed Day of Anger. Uh, he's in The Good, The Bad, and Ugly, Escape from New York. You know, the usual stuff. But this movie looks entertaining. I mean, again, Spaghetti Western. Can you really hate a Spaghetti Western? Maybe if you try really hard. Then we have a Massacre Mafia style. I can't wait till uh, Gone with the Pope comes out too. Have that coming. And the Beyond. Blu-rays that will be coming. But uh, yeah, I have not seen this movie. Years. Years in the making to see this one. I'm going to probably wait till I have Gone with the Pope because both of them together will probably be really fun to watch. But there we go. Grab both of those. I didn't like that. I moved that and I felt the disc spinning in there. It wasn't rattling, but it was spinning. Don't want to scratch it up. Then we have some Arrow releases. I imported some Arrow ones. Uh, we have White of the Eye, which I checked out... Uh, this is an HBO Canon back in the day, and this one has David Keith in it. Not to be confused with Keith David, who's an excellent actor, but uh, David Keith, who's not a bad actor himself. But uh, this is a really bizarre movie. Kind of uh, almost feels like American Giallo. Uh, kind of weird. Has that Southwestern vibe going on in there. Not bad. Interesting. Interesting. Some of the elaborate deaths in that, I'll tell you what. Uh, he puts somebody in the bathtub and is drowning them and puts a mirror to their face to show how vain they are. Just really crazy so they can see themselves in death. Really, really weird. But uh, cool nonetheless. Interesting, definitely. Uh, Rabbit by David Cronenberg. Love this movie. Great movie. You know, uh, I think I, 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 when I was younger, I sought out Rabbit and Shivers and saw them both. And I always really liked the early Cronenberg stuff. Rabbit, Shivers, The Brood, Scanners. That's the kind of stuff. I, I prefer those. And, you know, The Fly, of course. But, uh... Yeah, Rabbit's a really great movie. Marilyn Lee Chambers is in it. And uh, she gets a skin graft, becomes this parasitic vampire, and turns people into rabbit, kind of like zombies, and there's a big panic. Really good stuff. Uh, Cronenberg's probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, consistently good horror director. We have, Sh or John Rejector, I guess I'll say, Shivers, uh, which I haven't seen in a long time. I, I watched Rabbit recently back uh, on one of the DVDs, but Shivers, again, uh, as a puncture hole I just noticed. Might have to send this back. Uh, not into the puncture holes. I mean, there's a uh, thing. Might have to send that back. But regardless. Then we have The Burbs, which is one of my all-time favorites. Love this movie. Joe Dante, what else do I have to say? Great movie. Very funny. Used to watch it all the time as a kid. Then we have The Stuff by Larry Cohen. Also another amazing movie. Haven't seen this since I've been a kid. Always liked it then, too. Uh, the remake of The Thing. Uh, tried to watch this. I knew about all the CGI effects being dubbed over the regular effects. Tried to watch it. I couldn't get into it. When I seen the effects, I was like, nah, not into it. Even though I had Adam Beasy from Oz and I was a big fan. ABC's a Death 2. Watch this. Uh, I like it better than the first. I think the more of the shorts are solid and good in here. But uh, there's a couple that really stood out to me. Uh, Wish, W for Wish by the guys who did uh, Manborg and stuff like that. Uh, Champions of Zorb. What a, what a great short. Really funny. Uh, really spoke to me. Really uh, felt like it was a 90s type deal. And what else is there? Uh, there was uh, Z for Zygote, the ending. Whoa, that one was intense. Uh, the one with the... Uh, Youth was great. It, it, the ending had a bunch of them. There's just a lot in here I enjoyed. Uh, those are the three that stuck out to me the most. Uh, the zombie trial one was great as well. Put the reversal ro role reversal on there. ABC Death 2, like that. Birdman, which I have not got a chance to watch. Yeah, but this looks pretty cool. Uh, Michael Keaton. Always like Michael Keaton. It's cool to see him getting some, you know, uh, some comebacks. Cult of the Damned. Have not watched this. This is a Scorpion release, I believe. Or it's Kino La Lober or Lauber. Yeah which I think is kind of in cahoots with Scorpion. This is the Werner Herzog UK collection. One of the familiar, my, uh, familiarize myself more with his uh, films. I've seen uh, Aquari and uh, Nosferatu, which I both thought were pretty good. But this is, uh, there's an American release as well, which I might pick up. Uh, this is 18 films. The other one has, uh, I think, 16 or something like that. They do cross over a lot, but not all of them. This has uh, a lots and lots of movies. I'm just going to put it up there, and hopefully you guys can read them yourself, because I don't feel like pronouncing all these. So, I mean, lots and lots of stuff. But uh, the ones I'm really looking forward to are, uh, you know, uh, Wyshek, uh, Strozek, Cobra Verde, and uh, Fitzcarlo. I, I, terrible pronunciation skills. I, I can't even tie my shoes, guys. But, uh, you know, I've never heard these words pronounced out loud for the most part. So, uh, Womb, which uh, was dirt cheap at uh, Allied, and I've been interested in that movie for a long time. Poker Night, which I actually really enjoyed, and I was surprised by it. Uh, 
has Ron Perlman in it, and it's it's a really cool murder kind of thing where this uh, cop is kidnapped and he's got to figure out how to get out of there, and he keeps going back to this poker night he had with all the other detectives. It's pretty gory, uh, has some dark comedy elements to it, and some twists and things like that. Animal, which I watched, and uh, it looks more like a sequel to Feast or something, but uh, it's essentially we're trapped, we're in the woods, we're trapped in a cabin. There's a monster outside eating us. Pretty uh, run of the mill standard stuff here. Not horrible, not great. I would. Uh, I, I would kind of say check it out if it's your thing. It's a fun monster romp. I think it was on TV first. And then we have uh, New Year's Evil, which is a slasher movie. I've seen it a long time ago. Don't remember being very great or anything like that. But I remember being solid, and it's solid enough to get for me to get a Blu-ray, I guess. Uh, Lord of Illusions, which is a Clyde Barker film. This has both cuts on there uh, from Scream Factory. That The last two were from Scream Factory as well. Yeah, I, I like this movie. Uh, it's probably my least favorite Clyde Barker film. Huge Nightbreed fan, huge Hellraiser fan. Still like this one, and Daniel Von Bargan is great in it as Nyx. Uh, the cast is great in here as well. Yeah, really interesting movie. Uh, like it, uh, just probably a little too long. Maybe I should watch the theater cut. Uh, Monkey Shines, which I hadn't seen in years. I, you know, this is probably one, maybe i never seen it. You know, I, I've always thought I've seen it, but then I was thinking, maybe I hadn't seen this. But uh, George Romero movie, and you know what, uh, had a lot of, you know, it has a lot of slack behind it. I watched it, I enjoyed it, I thought it was pretty cool stuff, it had been years, uh, and I enjoy it, it's a good movie. Good solid movie about a guy who gets uh, kind of paralyzed, and he has his helper monkey who's being experimented on secretly, and it becomes really crazy, and goes out and kills people that uh, made him angry, and uh, starts getting violent towards him. The Dark Half which is another uh, George Romero movie. This one was a Stephen King book first. And, uh, yeah, uh, this has, uh, you know, uh, Timothy Hutton in it, and, of course, Michael Rooker. And that's all that matters, because Michael Rooker is amazing, and he plays a good guy in this movie. And I uh, hadn't seen this in years either. This one's pretty cool, too, uh, with the birds and everything like this. Yeah, this is a very interesting movie. I'd say check out The Dark Knight for sure. Exterminators of the Year 3000. Who did this one? Uh... You know what? I'm not familiar with Jules Harrison. I wonder if that's an alternate name. I, I really expected to turn this over and see like a, a like a, a Sergio Martino or somebody like that on the director. Maybe this is more of a Corman style deal. And it looks, uh, I don't know. But regardless, Exterminus Year Year 3000. It's hard to tell if I've seen this one. I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of those post-apocalyptic Mad Max ripoffs, but I don't know which ones I've actually have seen. Uh, Dark Hall and. Uh, I have not watched that. Uh, that's for the Blu-rays, and uh, now I'm going to get online and try to get my money back and get a replacement for Shivers. Hey guys, back for the DVD. This is going to be a long one. I'll start with the VHS. I picked this up. It was not $4.99. It was called The Slums of Beverly Hills. It was like a dollar. It looked fun. Eh. <laughs> and then I picked these up. Brand new, cheap. Dance Macabre. These are the Amazon exclusive tapes. This one... Uh, Robert England, I believe, and it's like a Russian slasher. Yeah, like he's like a Russian slasher. Uh, Deceit. And uh, this is Albert Poon, or Pun. I mean, these aren't very much to show, and I got two copies, because I want to keep one in the package and watch one called A Psycho Girls. And this just sounded like a blast. Sounded really fun. So, boom, those are the VHSs. Oh, here's a quick laser disc that was $2.00. Andy Calder, which is on uh, Blue right now, so this is probably pretty useless, but it's very cheap. Actually, a Rape Revenge, and it just, the cover struck me like, what an odd cover, man. And it, it had Bern, Ernest Borgnine on it, and with Borgnine, I was like, mine. Had to have it. All right, here we go. Let's start over here. Vic with Clue Gulliger. Love uh, Clue from Return of the Living Dead. This is a short, uh, yeah, and it's directed by Sage Sloan, the guy, one of the guys who used to run Grindhouse. He passed away. Looked interesting, so I said, uh, Malignant, which I reviewed, not a bad movie, pretty decent, uh, check out the review if you want to see more. Uh, this one has a broken cover, man, these covers do not last on these DVDs and stuff, but, uh, cover's not ripped, I can replace the cover. This is Night Tears, I got this used, wasn't very expensive, and, uh, it's a holiday slasher, I believe it is, let me check. Ah, uh, it's a horror anthology, even better for me, love horror anthologies. Uh, the Hunted, which was uh, pretty cheap, used. What else we got here? Oh, I bought this as an import uh, from uh, Umbrella, Australian DVD company. This is Night of Fear and In of the Damned, which uh, I believe are getting Code Red releases, but uh, 
I figured I didn't have the money to buy all those Cud Red releases. This is my uh, second copy of this movie. This got, got sent to me to review after I uh, reviewed the other copy. This is In the House of Flies. Uh, I really like this movie. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I like the 80s synth music. I've talked about that movie so much, but just watch one of the reviews out there. A Dark Place Inside, which is the actual DVD release. I had a, a screener I bought or something like that, but this is by the guy who did uh, Mike O'Mahony, who did uh, Deadly Detour... He did the clown, uh, sloppy, the psychotic, and IBS, which I, I liked all. And this is a serious take, so you're like, oh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Blackwoods have not watched. This is by Ulai Bull. Gonna be good. I mean, after Rampage, you never know. So, Chubbies. Uh, this is a small little creatures uh, killer movie, and you know what? I uh, love the cover art. Small little creatures movie that takes place on Halloween. I love small little creatures. Hence, my first movie has small little creatures in it. But uh, Chubbies. Had to, had to check it out. Love the cover art, for sure. Uh, Venus Flytrap. Uh, this is Massacre Video release. Yeah, regardless, uh, this, this is a shot on video, but regardless of that, it's, it's a cool movie. It's kind of like House on the Edge of the Park, but the shot on video version. Really liked it. Check it out. Check out the review. Uh, the Adam, Chaplin, Adam Chaplin Extended Edition with Never Before Seen. Never Before Scenes. Love this movie. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, gory, stylized, uh, almost superhero movie. Uh, can't wait to watch the Extended Edition. Demon's Rook, really like this movie, uh, Top 50 again uh, for me. Uh, maybe the story can be convoluted for some people, but I enjoyed the mythology and the gore and the craziness and the ambition. Really like this one. Uh, Bombshell Bloodbath, again Top 50 for me. I really like this one as well. Uh, really cool story, uh, really stylized, love the music in there. Uh, this one I picked up because I heard on the Killer POV podcast, I think... Uh, Rebecca McKendry on there. There's like three people on the podcast. Good podcast, by the way. I really enjoy listening to it at work and things like that. Uh, so this was a pretty cool movie, Lighthouse. It's a UK import, so I grabbed that. Uh, Children of God uh, by James Franco. Uh, got it used. Wasn't very expensive. Figured I'd try it out for that. Uh, House of Last Things. Uh, got this review. Kind of an interesting movie. Uh, check out the review. You, uh, if you, you'll tell if you if you'll like it. I was kind of surprised by it. I didn't know what to expect within the first five minutes, but it won me over. Whitewash with Thomas Hayden Church. This is more of a thriller type deal. The Last Showing with Robert Englund. Not a bad movie. Robert Englund plays this like, kind of crazy projectionist who's obsessed with film and movie theaters and things like that. And, you know, they're kind of uh, phasing him out and stuff like that. But a uh, really cool movie. Dark Mountain. Not a fan of, the, fan of this at all. It's a, you know, it's a found footage kind of point of view style thing. I just really didn't enjoy it. I liked the, the locations, but I reviewed that movie as well. This one, Massage Parlor of Death, kind of almost like a Blood Feast remake in a way. Uh, also wasn't a huge fan of this one, also reviewed it. Uh, shot on video, low budget. Well, it's supposed to be kind of like a redo of the shot on video, low budget. Hazmat. You know what, I think I reviewed this a long time ago when it was released, and uh, I had mixed feelings about it, but it was, again, not very expensive. Used, picked it up to revisit it, maybe. And American Terror, this one looked pretty cool to me. So uh, I grabbed this. I'm not sure if it's any good or not, but the, the trailer won me over. That is an American Terror. Uh, DVD version of The Houses of October Built. Uh, somehow I ended up with a DVD and a Blu-ray. I'm stupid like that. Uh, the Frankenstein vs. the Mummy. This movie was actually kind of fun. I didn't have much expectation, but uh, it, it is a little long, but uh, it, it was entertaining to me. I liked it. Uh, and you get what you get. You get Frankenstein vs. the Mummy. Uh, but maybe the fight scene is a little too short for some people. I liked it. I thought it was good and good fun. Reviewed that one as well. The Quiet Ones. Uh, I've not watched this. Heard mostly bad things about it. Uh, exist. Now, this one I thought looked really cool, so I, I, I picked it up, and uh, you know what? I wasn't a huge fan of it at all. It's, again, it's a found footage movie, but by the first five minutes of the movie, I'm thinking, well, we know who the hero of this movie is, and it's not any of the characters. I mean, I disliked all the characters immediately. They're obnoxious. I don't really care about them. They're generic, and uh, I was kind of just waiting for them to die, and I'm, I'm tired of waiting for characters to die. I just don't care when that happens anymore. I'm like, we're going to do this again. This is what we're going to do. We're going to watch some generic or unlikable people get massacred but uh, you know that's just kind of a the, the thing the way it is but uh at the end the, the special effects were really cool and i think if this movie had some different characters i think this movie would have probably been a winner for me just a little bit of tweaks on the writing on uh, the characters and things like that and i think exists would have been a winner but with that kind of stuff i, I just couldn't get into it Ginger Clown, which I actually have a foreign release of. This is a wild movie. It, it, everybody looks like they're from the 50s, but it's in the style of an 80s movie. Really weird. Uh, cool, though. I liked it. Lots of uh, familiar, uh, you know, 
B-movie cast people in it and stuff like that. Uh, Nurse, this is not the 3D version, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen this. Heard it's really like a modern day exploitation movie. Uh, don't know what it's going to be like. The Taking of Deborah Logan, surprisingly good uh, found footage movie, which I would have never watched if I didn't hear it on uh, a couple podcasts, Killer POV and Blood Sprayer. And Blood Sprayer, they uh, did spoil it for me, but if they wouldn't have spoiled it for me, I probably would have never watched the movie because I was thinking, uh, I, I really was like, Oh, uh, a possession movie. It really came off as a possession movie. Big ghost stories, possession movies, and found footage are where it's at. I mean, and as fact is what they're making. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of tired of all that unless they have their own spin on it. And this one has its own spin on it. And I think that it was unique in that to take this old woman had Alzheimer's and, you know, this documentary crew. And Alzheimer's is a really sad disease. And I think everybody had known somebody that uh, had it. So I think that was a good way to connect to the audience. And then to turn it on its head was kind of actually messed up to be honest but uh you know horror movies shouldn't always be so uh cozy you know and that's i mean that's the point really i guess and some a lot of horror movies not to get with to get in your head or just to kind of freak you out and that, that it kind of worked it, it's kind of a cool movie the cabining which is a horror comedy have not watched uh, about a couple guys going out to make a script and people die at a cabin sounded fun haven't seen it the dead and the damned too i don't even know if i have the first one but I have a feeling that I don't really need to see the first one. Uh, the Scribbler. Heard some interesting things about it. I mean, a dollar fifty. You can't even rent it for that. Uh, Silent Mountain. I don't know. Again, a dollar fifty. Look, it was a war movie. Looked interesting. Again, what is it? Oh, this one's a rattler. I don't know if it goes on there. Not gonna force it. I'm going to be happy with it being a Rattler because it was $1.50. Age of Uprising. The guy from the show Hannibal. Uh, Wonderland. Again, $1.50. Don't know much about it. I'm willing to take chances for $1.50. Uh, then we have The Possession of Michael King. Again, would have never got this unless I didn't hear positive things about it from someone else. So grab that. Uh, Disaster LA, The Last Zombie Apocalypse begins here. As opposed to the first zombie apocalypse somewhere else? I don't know. But it's a disaster LA. Unless it's a sequel that I don't know about. Grand Piano. Not watched that either. Elijah Wood, kind of interesting guy with all the horror stuff he's been involved with to me. And I like love the Maniac remake. So, Hazard Jack. I have not watched that. What else we got? Where, which looked like an interesting werewolf movie. So I, uh, I believe this was by was this by the director who did the movie Monster Brawl, which I didn't hear good things about. So I figured I'd grab that. Just uh, Dead Times Tales, which is supposed to be AKA uh, Things Three, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Things, the uh, there's two things released. I think Things, the other one that was made in the 90s, is supposed to be Things Two. I'm not sure. Somebody correct me on the whole Things chronological sequel order and whatnot. But I think that is uh, it's. And I have not seen that, but I think that is supposed to be AK Things 3. We have Enemy, which I heard had a crazy ending. It was a crazy movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Never Lost, which I watched, and uh, I had heard this came highly recommended to me. And uh, I think it's okay. I just, again, the main guy, I was like, am I supposed to like this guy? I mean, I hate this guy. Like, I can't side with this guy. He's an, he, he seemed like an abysmal piece of garbage to me, but that's just me. Uh, not a bad actor, just a, a really dislikable, uninteresting character to me. Uh, very strange, it mixes dreams and reality and things like that, but uh, I felt that the movie, I would have enjoyed it more if I was 18 years old getting out of high school. That's how I feel, but uh, I could be wrong. I mean, it's opinion, so I'm not wrong, but I'm not right on your opinion, I guess. You, know, you guys know what I mean, but it just wasn't for me. Uh, I thought there was some interesting stuff in there. The Darker Fifty Shades, the fetish set. This is movie, uh, kind of interesting, but also kind of uh, convoluted in a lot of ways. And uh, obviously the name's the cash in on Fifty Shades of Grey. Reviewed that. Uh, not absolutely horrible. All Saints Eve, absolutely horrible. But uh, I didn't, uh, I, I just could not get into this movie. I thought that the writing and the acting was just abysmal, except for Sean Whalen, who's not even credited on the back here. And uh, Mark uh, McCulley's also in it, but he's in it a couple seconds, and he doesn't really get to do much with it. But, uh, yeah, not a fan of this movie. Uh, slasher movie in a haunted house, uh, kind of generic. This is the second copy of Dark Divorce I got. Got this by my Jorgen. He uh, sent me a German package again. Uh, I, but, uh, you know, that release, actually, I had the same release. It's not good sound. Uh, maybe the movie would be better if I could actually hear the whole plot point at the very end where the music drowns out what the person's saying. Dungeon of Evil, director's cut, German splatter. 
not familiar with some of these. Uh, Son of Man on cut, again, not familiar with this one. I really like to just sit on my ass and watch movies all day and not go to work and do anything. Sick, Survive the Night. Uh, this is a design movie, Canadian. Uh, it was okay until the ending, and the ending kind of won me over. Kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I reviewed that one. Hellfire. This one's surprisingly a fun movie about uh, these girls that end up kidnapping uh, the Antichrist, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Demons and things like that. Good movie. Bible Belt Slasher. Uh, this is actually a sequel, and the original's on here as well. Uh, kind of enjoyed this one. Not not a horrible movie. Uh, definitely 80s if I Kind of cool. We have Realm of Souls. Uh, this movie to me was abysmal. Uh, that's just, again, it goes to my preference. It's a ghost story. It's found footage. There's way too many characters. It's convoluted. And it, it, it just doesn't interest me. I don't even remember what was what was going on throughout the movie anymore. And it also takes place in Georgia. It's just, I mean, there's a couple scenes that I thought maybe this is going somewhere, but I just do not like this. It, it just, it goes against everything I enjoy in a movie. It just, it, it just seemed generic and uninteresting to me. But that's me. Some people like that stuff or they wouldn't be making it, I guess. Mockingbird, which I have not watched. Uh, what else we got? As Above, So Below. Also have not watched. Dance with the Devil. Uh, I saw the cut version of this. This is by Alex Danglacia, who did The Last Circus, uh, Day of the Beast, and uh, Witching and Bitching. Uh, the first two I love. Witching and Bitching is okay. And uh, I watched the cut version of this and loved it. It has uh, Javier Bardem and uh, James Gandolfini. But now it's time to watch the uncut version. Full UK uncut version. Hope the full UK uncut version is a full uncut version, but that could mean full UK uncut version. Everything good still cut out because it's from the UK. So I don't know. Uh, if it's not uncut, somebody let me know, but I really look forward to watching that because uh, I've seen the cut version. Uh, my buddy Cage, Keith Voigt Jr., told me that I would probably, me and Dustin Mills, buddy of mine, would probably like this because it's has tons of action, is crazy and over the top, and low budget and just wild. The Witching Hour. So, I got it. It was very expensive. Uh, the Cronus, Tower of Doom, which is also released by Tromo. I have the Tromo version. This is supposed to be a two-hour gore film. Uh, no Reason, which I also have already by Olaf Inbach. I have not a chance to watch it. Oh, Game Over by Timo uh, Rose. Or is it Timo Rose? Yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah. I have not watched this either. This was one I was going to buy eventually, so awesome. Uh, Your Vice is a locked door, and I and only I have the key. This is the only way I could get this because the I believe what is the company No Shame it releases out of print, very expensive. This release says it's in widescreen, and but it looks rough. I mean, it looks like a rough release. It looks like a, a VHS thing. I don't know, but uh, Sergio Martino uh, Giallo, and I had to see it. So uh, what is this? I don't even know what this word is. Noctum? I just can't read it very well. I mean, it's like in blood. Noctum, I guess it is. German Spider again. Uh, the Devil's Honey. This is a Korean import. And thankfully, it has English subtitles. This is a, a Lucio Fulci movie I've never got to see. Awesome. English subtitles on there. It looks like a Korean release. Craze, which is a Jack Palance movie. And he plays a nutball in it. And I think this is probably one of those low-budget releases, too. But that's the way I'm going to see it. Uh... Let's see this. More a Torres, or Torres, uh, but this doesn't have English subtitles, but it's an Italian gore film that took a lot of slack from a bloody disgusting about being, uh, you know, chauvinistic and things like that. And for a horror website, man, or is it, I think it's bloody disgusting, they tore into it and made, it almost looked like a personal attack on the director. But uh, the trailer looked interesting and... Uh, it's like kind of like old Roman soldiers coming back and killing people. That sounded cool. I don't know if it is cool. And I probably won't know the plot, but uh, the addiction uh, import by Bell Ferreira. Yeah, I believe this is English subtitles on it as well. Maybe it's in English. Actually, this is an English movie, so I hope it's in English. <laughs> but uh, Christopher Walken vampire movie, black and white. Then we have the three faces of terror. The, uh, who's in this? Who? Uh, Sergio Stilevi did this. The uh, famous Italian special effects artist. And apparently, John. Uh, uh, Fleepin' Law's in it, who's in Tombstone, and, uh, what else is he in? Man, he's in one of the Italian, uh, horror movies, uh, he's in Tombstone for sure. Oh, he's in Return of the Living Dead. He's Chuck. But, yeah, and Lamberto Bava, and he plays, uh, one of the McClary brothers in Tombstone. Then we have Don't Wake the Dead, German Splatter. There's boobs on the front. Don't report me. Or report me. I don't care. Girl House. Got a screener. 
not a bad movie. Wasn't expecting much. It was pretty cool. Uh, the Other Side, which, uh, or Franklin. Sorry, uh, I'm getting confused with movies. The Franklin. This is a screener. Very weird, bizarre movie here. Uh, experimental, surreal, surreal, kind of a guy going through all these times and having bad things happen to him. I thought it was cool. Dustin Mills, uh, short collection. Uh, a bunch of his old shorts and music videos tossed on a disc. Everything except Plate Face. Uh, on this disc and music videos and old ones even from his uh, childhood. There's also a new one on here which uh, I helped with I was in it. It's called uh, Abduction. I I can't really be like, it's great, go check it out. Yeah, I'm in it. But, you know, I'm great, go check it out. I'm in it. But I'm just kidding. But anyways, yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, seeing some of his older work is also funny. You know, his like friend films with his friends and stuff like that. So if you're interested, go pick it up, you know. Uh, Vi, which I heard about on a podcast, uh, crazy Russian witch movie, and uh, yeah, the last 10 minutes of this movie or so are completely insane, but it is cool, has good atmosphere, cool movie. Uh, picked up this DVD of, uh, this is an import, and this is getting a United States Blu-ray release now, so it's kind of useless, but this is Island of Death, which is a crazy movie, uh, Greek movie, I believe it's Greek, the director's Greek, and anyways, the director set out to break as many taboos as he can, and this movie I actually really enjoy, I only watched it the one time, but I'll probably wait till the Blu-ray to watch it again, all hell breaks loose, this movie is kind of a crazy, uh, biker, grindhouse style movie, kind of like, not as, uh, graphic or as, well made is like dear god no but maybe something like that but uh yeah essentially this is about um uh let me think uh it's like a biker group from hell comes up and they want these virgins and things like that and this guy keeps getting brought back by god to kill them uh, it's okay i mean uh it started off great but uh it kind of lost the steam for me we have uh what do we got here two midnight movie boxes uh uh, I figured I'd grab these from uh, God knows when Media Blasters is going to... I know they're kind of like not making movies anymore, but no, when, when, when to say when their stuff's going to be impossible to find. But uh, Midnight Movies 1, Midnight Movies 2. Uh, Midnight Movies 1 has the Lemon Grove Kids Meet the Monsters trilogy, the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies, the adventures of Rat Pink and Boo Boo, and the Thrill Killers. Mm, cheap, cheap set. And what else do we got here? We got the second one has... Body Fever, The Las Vegas Serial Killer, The Hollywood Strangler Meets the Skid Row Slasher, and Blood Shack. But yeah, those are those. And what else? Oh my god, man. I gotta not wait off to do these for so long. We have Bruno Mattei's uh, Zombies the Beginning and uh, Island of the Living Dead, which are essentially his versions of Aliens. And I've seen one of these. I don't remember which one, but man, are they ripoffs. They're made in like the mid-2000s, but they're pretty funny. Pretty funny. Coyote. Great uh, art, horror, weird movie, kind of in the vein of like a Cronenberg or Lynch or something like that. Really recommend this. Bill Burst Jr.'s in it. Kills it. Hi 8, uh, horror anthology by All Shot on Video Guys, In Shot on Video style. I loved all the shorts except one. Pretty cool stuff. Lots of familiar directors doing their thing. Uh, Pro Wrestlers for Zombies. Uh, I picked this up at, uh, where was it, uh, Days of the Dead in uh, Indianapolis. Yeah. That's all I'll say. I watched it. It's not for me. I did like, I just don't understand why all the characters are so asshole-ish. And it's like, except Roddy Piper and uh, Kurt Angle. It was really cool seeing Kurt Angle in it and Roddy Piper and Hacksaw Jim Duncan. But uh, I just, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. It's just, the ADR is pretty bad too. But uh, we have, uh, I don't remember what this one is called. It's a Bruda Mate, uh, I can't. I don't even know if I can show the front here. I probably can't. Bruda Mate, uh Torture snuff one which will probably be released by intervision sometime anyways but yeah uh don't know the name because it's all in japanese it was very expensive i am no one this is the two disc toe tag edition of this movie i had by jason hoover i had the original edition but i picked that up the seventh day uh this is the one without narration in it uh, i have the other edition as well cool serial killer movie oh, i forgot one of my blu-rays uh but uh, this Blu-ray is Watership Down by Criterion about the rabbits trying to survive. I've never seen it. Uh, heard lots of things about it, but skipped on that Blu-ray. Sorry, guys. Should have been with the Blu-rays. The Amityville Death House. Looked like it could be fun. What else we got here? Oh, home run. We have Wrong, which was recommended to me. This is by the guy who did Rubber. We have Wrong Cops by the guy who did Wrong and, wrong and Rubber. The Den, which is kind of a cool internet, uh, like, kind of scary horror film where people are ended up getting killed and stuff. Didn't think it was too bad. thought it was kind of cool. Beneath, have not seen it. The Damned, have not seen it. These are all IFCs I picked up cheap. Haunt, have not seen it. 
At the Devil's Door, have not seen it. Cold in July, have seen this, and it was freaking amazing. This is by Jim Mickle, who did, uh, he did a couple movies I saw. He did uh, We Are What We Are, the remake, which I thought was really well made, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. I liked the original better. Don't hate it, though. Uh, really well made, really well performed, really great cinematography, and uh, it's a good movie. It's just, I was a little disappointed. And he also did uh, he did two more movies, that uh, Stakeland, which is cool, and uh, Mulberry Street, which I have not seen. But this movie, I really, really liked it. It's definitely a crime film that you never know where it's going to go, and it's just like tough dudes making tough decisions. And uh, I didn't know Don Johnson could act until I watched Django Unchained in this, and I was like, he's really good in both those movies. Uh, Sam Shepard's also in it. He's great. And Michael C. Hall, which is from Dexter, which I'm not, uh, I don't really watch Dexter. Don't hate it, just never got into it. And he's actually a good actor. Really good movie. Really recommend that one. And Hellion, which is not, it's a drama movie I just picked up, have not watched. And The House at the End of Time, which I have not watched. But uh, I think that's my update. I think that's everything. I know it took forever, and I'm going to pass out. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.